In this lesson, I want to show you something that is absolutely amazing. It's a new feature. Go up to the word edit on the pull down menu and you will see perspective warp. Now, if you don't see perspective warp, go to the cloud and get it. It's totally worth it. Perspective warp allows me to shift objects three dimensionally on a two dimensional surface. Like, for example, we have two images I'm going to show you, and these are in your exercise folder. One begins with 285 and one begins with 950, these two. Let's go back to this one. I want to rotate that castle. That castle has been sitting there for hundreds of years. I don't care. I want to rotate it in three-dimensional space. Now, how do I accomplish that? Well, first off, let's make a copy of this one. I'm going to drag it down to the new icon. Why? Well, it'll give us a before and an after look, okay? And it might actually help with the image when we're working on it, too. So select the one on top, go to the word edit, and go down to Perspective Warp. Now, in Perspective Warp, you don't have a lot of options. It's deceptively simple on how it works, yet it's tremendously powerful on what it does. We build grids that build things like boxes around objects that we want to change. So we have our tool. I'm going to get right about here and click and drag down just like that. Now, that's our first perspective grid. Now, grids can be moved. Okay. They can be changed in terms of perspective by clicking on these right here and moving them. I love the fact that you can click on one of these and use your arrow keys to change it. If you grab on the wall right here, top, bottom, left, or right, you can drag it. But the trick about doing that, if you want to maintain the perspective, is hold the shift key, don't forget that. And you can maintain the perspective, which is good to know. If you don't want that one, delete it. Let's build again here. Start right about here, and I'm going to come down. Now, what I'm looking for is kind of this point right here where the perspective falls away this way, and then it falls away this way. Now, these lines are very straight. Now, that's a nice thing. It's going to be easier for us. But if that castle, the image was taken, it was crooked, I would move this one left or right to fit that line. But that's straight. But this isn't, is it? So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to grab that one. I'm going to use my arrow keys. And I'm just going to pull that down, this line right here, until it kind of matches the roof line. That's a good one to look for, right like that. Now this one, we'll go the other way until we match that up. Now if I come over here and hold the shift key, don't forget the shift key, I can then bring it out like this. I'm going to go to right about there. Now here's where the fun starts. Draw another one. Just like that. Now grab it. Gives you help right here. Grab it. Watch what happens when I get close. See it turn blue? Let go when it turns blue and it locks it pin to pin. We're building our box. Now, I'm going to bring this one in some. To about there for now. All I really need to do is bring these down. And again, I'm using the architecture of the image to help line things up. That's a nice thing about architecture. It has lines. And you can use those lines to line things up. That's not too bad. I think I like that. And let's go ahead and stop there. Go up here and say warp. Now this is where the fun really begins. Because before we built the box, it didn't influence the object. When I click on these now, it influences the objects. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that out with an undo. I love that key. What I'm going to do, like I said, is rotate this. The problem is, as I'm working on it, each pin is independent. Now, if you're trying to straighten a wall out, that's great. Our walls are actually straight. You do have a button up here. This one will straighten all vertical lines. Now, it doesn't do anything to ours because ours were vertical perfectly. You can also use this one to straighten horizontal lines. Not that I want to do that, but you can. not Undo again. This one does both. This one resets. So you kind of do some stuff and you go, oh man, I wish I hadn't done that. That's horrible. And you come over here to reset it for you. You can always go back to layout and play around more. You can click this button right here and say, get me out of here. I don't even want to be here. And this one is the I like it button. Now let's do this. How do I change that perspective? Because if I pull this one like this, it kind of shifts everything. Here's the trick. Bring your cursor over to this line because that's the one I want to move. Hold the shift key and see it turn yellow and shift click. Now check this out. If I come down here now, watch what happens. I can literally change and rotate that castle without breaking one brick in a three-dimensional space working on a two-dimensional object if I build the box correctly. Now that's got to be an amazing thing. Now you can't go too far. It really is a two-dimensional shape. Like, I can't flip the building around and see what's on the other side of it. And if you go too far, it can cause problems. 
But to me, that is an absolutely amazing thing to be able to do. And we can do the same thing here. Shift click it again and work on this side. You can change the appearance of the building itself as to maybe the height of the photographer when he took the image. And if you like it, click the I like it button right here. Here's a before and after. A subtle change, but like I said before, how many times as a photographer did you say, oh, I wish I'd been just a little bit to the left or to the right? Now, I do see one problem up here. See the spire from here? Now, that's because in this one, this is what it did. It had to pull things in. What I like about putting a copy underneath is sometimes, if you use it correctly, it can really get rid of all the other stuff and make it look good for you. That's another reason why I do like to use a copy. Now, I don't want that, obviously. So I'm going to go to that one right here. I'm going to pick up my spot healing brush tool. I love that tool. And say, get right about here and see if I can get rid of that. There you go. No problem. Let's go to our next image. Now, in this image, all I want to do is straighten out the walls. But the perspective is going to be very important if we draw it correctly. We're one click away from doing it. Let's make a copy again. Just like that. Let's come up to the word edit and go down to perspective warp. Now, we only need a single plane in this one. So I'm going to draw this out. I'm going to grab right here and drag up and match that angle. Now, if you do this correctly and you really pay attention to the angle itself, you are one click away. I'm going to use this down here, kind of this break wall for the water, I guess, as my line. And I'm going to move this over here and get that just the way it's supposed to be. Now, again, here's where you want to use your arrow keys to nudge it exactly into place. And you got to get those angles. That's all we're looking for here is those angles. So I got them, I think. I think this one might go down one more. Okay, now I'm going to click here, and I'm going to hold the shift key down. I'm going to end up right on this building right about there. And let's go this way with this one. Just like that. I think we got it. Click the warp button. Now these buttons I showed you before, but now they're going to work. I'm saying I want you to straighten those lines out. Click here, watch what happens. One click, that's all we did. Click the I like it button right here. Now check that out before and after. Now we did lose stuff, okay? But with this one in the background, a lot of times you can fix it that way. This is an amazing tool. I absolutely love this tool, Perspective Warp. It's a new feature, but it changes how we work with two-dimensional images.